Well, here we go, Barber's Arms, episode 23. Well, this is it. Big show coming up tonight, guys. First of all, me and guys are going to talk about a little candor this week, what's been happening in the barbering industry and the hair industry. Then around about 8.15, we've got Adam Johansson coming on from the Barbershop Company in New Zealand, early start for him. Guys, he's going to do a cocktail tonight, which is his fig and honey. Looking forward to that. He's got to neck that in one. Our local heroes this week are Jim the Trim from Wales, and we've got Jay Burns. All joining us on Barber's Arms, episode 23. Mr. Machin, are you in the house? I'm there, mate. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. That, that's different, isn't it? That, our introduction there, fantastic. Uh, just showing what we're, what we're going to do tonight, what we're introducing to the guests. Internationally and at home. So what's your week been like, mate? It's been, it's been good. It's getting uh, back to normal. Obviously, we had our live event last uh, Sunday, which were good. Um, thanks for everybody who, who tuned in and joined in to us. I hope you all enjoyed it. We had some really nice, positive comments. And uh, busy again with work, work, things coming up. I've got lots of filming in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, still not going out live, but um, we do uh, a big Boots conference that's normally... I love doing Boots. It's just before uh, Salon International. And each day we have maybe 400 delegates that come in and we do an half an hour show. And um, this year it's going to be live, virtually live. So we're going to a studio in Nottingham for three days to uh, to do that filming. So things are getting a little bit back to normal. Got some new exciting products coming out. And uh, yeah, we're all excited. So what about yourself? You had a good week? Yeah, great. Really busy. So that's uh, it's nice to get back to a little bit of normality, like you said. Um, things aren't quite back to where we used to be, but, uh, you know, things are coming on. Are you back in the office yet or not? No, no most of the staff went back in this week gradually, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, taking all their hardware that they've been using from home. They've all done fantastic working from home. Big up to everybody at Wall that's done that. Um, they've, they've done amazing. So uh, gradually people's got back in and then from Monday onwards, you'll see more of a, a full up to 90% capacity back in the offices and um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll, I'll be down there. Um, I want to bet everybody get out of the mistakes out of the way where you can't go into the coffee areas. You can't go into the st I'm terrible when I go in because I'll do my meetings and then I like a little walk. I'll go into the warehouse, I'll go into production, I'll go and see everybody. And uh, unfortunately, that's not really allowed unless you're into them areas. And, and if you do so, there's different passes and you have to wear, you know, different kinds of PPE as you're going into those areas. So... Um, I'm going to give it a couple of weeks before I go in. Yeah, the thing is, I mean, things are changing daily, aren't they? I mean, I know uh, Boris has been on, and we, you know, everything's changed again in in England. I know things are different in the devolved nations, but everything's uh, changing very slightly. From Monday, we've got different um, rules coming in. But I think from a barbershop point of view, everybody still, you've got to carry on wearing your masks and your visors. I know, we, I think I saw something there. Uh, online today that you could wear glasses or goggles now yes. instead, of the, instead of the full visor so that might I, I don't to be honest i you know if anybody watched us on sunday which really enjoyed i thought it was a great event we uh, we we actually use the visors that have no not the foam visors the ones on the glasses they're really great i don't i don't mind wearing them at all the actual mask is a bit of a problem sometimes you know i feel a bit claustrophobic especially if we're having a really full day and I know you mentioned it uh, on Sunday that it's the first time you've used them because on, on live models, so you've got to use them. We, I've almost got used to it now. I know, I know it's horrible to say, that, and I know we shouldn't get used to the new whatever it is, but, you know, it isn't a problem for me anymore. I'm, I feel like I've, I've almost got used to it. Um, so it's good. You know, it, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a really, really hardship now if you like but people still wear them you are getting visited uh, we signed some of our rachel's been out and about this week we're signing up our all our new apprentices and she's had to lay the law down in some barber shops and some barber shops have had warnings multiple warnings because they aren't using a mask and a shield and wiping down and you know doing what they should be we've got no excuse now guys we don't want them to give the government any any excuse to uh, impose any more restrictions on us so you just got to do the right thing yeah and i think <clears throat> look i think everybody's done well i said last week um you know big up to everybody it's all right doing one model and, and presenting uh, with a visor and mask i found it quite tough and 
I find, I find, it, I find it tough, anyway. I love a live, live audience. I feed off a live, a live audience. And we'll, we will be back at some point. We know we will. But big up to everybody who's been doing it because um, it is tough. And I can imagine, you know, it's easy sometimes just to slip your, slip your barrier or slip your guard. But you have to do it because, um, as we can see, there's more restrictions coming in. And I think if people get twitchy, especially the government, they will do the things where, you know, there's a potential chance of things being closed down, services being closed down. So that's the last thing any of us want. Um, so I think that's um, something we've all got to bear in mind. I'd just like to say on, on, on let's get all this out of the way now, but obviously our respects go to everybody over in America. We're an American company, and obviously what happened 19 years ago is never forgotten. And uh, everybody at Barber's Arms, we send our love out to everybody in America, everybody around the world, really, but especially what happened 19 years ago. Our thoughts from everybody at Barber's Arms goes out to everybody in America um, at this time. It's a tough time for everybody. Yeah, I mean, um, we've done, from the BBH point of view, we've done huge amount of work in the last five years over there, five, six years, and uh, met some great people, some lovely people, and to be uh, involved over there, our American cousins, you know, our hearts go out to you. We, uh, we mirror everything that Simon's just said, so, you know, we're, we're all here for you anyway. Um, it, it's one of those things, you know, when... People say, where were you at a certain time or whatever? Um, it, it's one of those things that you will always remember, isn't it? You know, it's a um, horrible thing to happen and it defines a lot of people. But un unfortunately, it's, um, you know, something that happens and, you know, we've got to kind of march on, I'm afraid. So, but we everybody... Have We've got to do it. And hopefully tonight we fetch a bit of cheer to all our American, American uh, brothers that's out there and sisters that's out there watching Barbara's Arms. I know we've got a big following out there. We've got lots of stuff to talk about tonight. Guys, we've got a great guest on coming from uh, New Zealand who's uh, just uh, driving up to the car park as we speak. Uh, thanks to the 94,000 people who tuned in to us last week again. You know, me and Gaz, it doesn't fade away from week one to week 23. Every single day we look at the views that we're having. Um, and we analyse those views as well to see how many people are watching for the entirety of the show, whether you're just glancing or you're, you're picking up, you know, a, a visitor or a guest that's in the arms. But it's a massive uh, shout out to everybody. And uh, we always have our top fans as well. Too many to mention now on each show. In the beginning, we could mention 20 or 30 of you throughout the night, but the, the list is so long. But you guys know who you are. And every week I see all your messages. So don't think I don't read every message or comments. And it's always nice. And I think... Outside of the Barber's Arms, Gary, um, there's, there's a clique there that uh, there's a gang of them that kind of probably, I look at the comments sometimes and think, are they watching us or do they just chat to each other on a Friday night while we're on? It's, uh, it's kind of nice to, to see everybody's joining us for a beer, but not necessarily chatting to us, they chat to each other as well, which is great. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just going to say that. I mean, we've got Marion from Canada and Vagabonds and Alison Russo and Nikos. You know, we've got all the usual crowd in, but they have almost a social behind our back, really, don't they? We, we can't get well, everybody out, out, like you say, but it's really Talking good. of Alison, she, um, do you want to talk about the Digest? Because she just featured in that, didn't she? Yeah, she did. Uh, just just quickly, before we start, I know you're feeding your face there. What are you actually drinking tonight? Um, I've just got a nice glass of Merlot. Oh, very nice. Are you very very chain. I was just going to say, you give the beer a change because of the boxing, or is it? Are you just changing? Oh, mate, the... honestly, I'm getting ferocious now. I was on the speedball today. I couldn't leave it alone. I was on for about 45, 50 minutes just on the speedball. And the coach kept coming over to me, like, and he's telling me, and then, like, get, all right, get, we get on it. And it was like, he's videoing me. And it's like, yeah, I feel, I'm feeling it tonight. Feeling it. Very good. Well, I'm on it. Uh, so. Just from a, a North American. I've got a goosey IP, IPA here that I drink this out all the time when I'm over there. Cheers to everybody. Cheers, Simon. All the very best, mate. Cheers, everybody. And, and well, another great around. week. Yep. All the very best to the barber's arm. Yeah. I've got my moonshine ready. Um, I need to be looking at getting myself a, a big bottle of the whole nut. Um, yeah, is it called whole nut? No, tr tough nut. And the uh, roasted apple. Do you know what? On Sunday when we did the filming, Sam said to me, oh, honestly, when I was watching you, he said, I just wanted to have a drink of it because he said, 
And I'm thinking, right, we need to get into uh, O'Dowell's or O'Neill's or whatever send them. And we need to be sending us like buckets of it because I think sales of moonshine last week must have gone up because we were having all these different flavours. But you tell me that real moonshine doesn't taste like that at all. Um, no. And, and usually if it's real moonshine, it doesn't have a label on. I, I can tell you that now. And it, it tends to, you know, people who, who drink proper moonshine um you know i might be wrong and people are, guys in america who i've worked with um they tend to don't have a lot of teeth and um it, it, <laughs> it can be quite damaging if you if you have a lifetime of moonshine anyway but getting back to the digest um digest absolutely fantastic anybody who isn't uh, who, who doesn't actually read the digest if you become a member which is free of the bba if you go to the bba website the British Barbers Di Association Digest is there. Got some great features in there. Our editor-in-chief, Jackie, she's there for putting everything you need to know. We've got great uh, information about the, the industry. We've got some certain people there who are on the Barbers Arm as well. We've got Simon Shore in there who's actually uh, listened and, and talked about the what he needed to do. We've got Jake Lansley. We've got Alison Russo got close, close shave. So all the time we, we're talking about today, um, if you give that a read, it's a great read. It comes out at the moment. We're every two months, but it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit uh, more regular as well, I think. So anybody who wants a good read about what's happening gives you all the events that was going on with the BBA as well. So gives you all about the accreditation, everything that you need to know about the BBA. Just give it a read drop into the Barbers, uh, British Barbers Association, and it's a great read. So, Simon, I think we're nearly ready for our uh, new, our latest international guest, Mr. Yeah. Adam Johansson. It'd be great. And as I say, it's a great lead as well, just before we go into Adam as well. Uh, I think 900, nearly 1,000 people have registered for our global event on the uh, 20th. Um, T tonight, you know, you'll see this popping up tonight, guys, but you've still got time to register. Um, you've still got two weeks, um, well, a week from Sunday to register for this. This is over two days, 20th and 21st of September. If you like what we did on Sunday, multiply that by 50. We've got some amazing guests coming from America, from China, from Norway, from the UK. Um, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to that global event on the 20th. Um, and you've still got time to register for that as well, guys. So um, some of the names will change a little bit. We've got loads of lined up that we've been talking um, about, but um, some of the lineups you can see coming up, we've got Geoff Davis, myself and Gaz, Rick Roberts, you've got Frank Reimer, Van Council. We've got some of our American artistic team that's going to be joining as well. We've got Anthony Edge coming in the day after. We've got Jay Ramos, uh, Bobby Thompson. Uh, you can see there we've got some Australians in there. And uh, we've got our Indian friends as well, Jawed Habib and Alim Akin, um, who is um, he's plastered it all over Facebook that I've invited him to. Great tactic that I've invited him to sell International 2021. So instead of waiting for me to confirm everything and put a ticket on, he put it all over Facebook. So I can't get out of it. Not that I would <laughs> anyway, but great tactic, Alim, and he's going to be a great superstar to fetch into London, hopefully, if we're all back to normality. You can also watch last week's event as well, uh, Michael Damiano uh, doing his Afro fade. you got Gaza, who was doing the signature share, myself, I did the mode. And then you can also then watch Eric Lander and also Sam Campagna, who recreated the front cover of Modern Barber. And me and Gaz finished off with a quick chat then at Barber's Arms afterwards. Great day last Sunday. It's all up on our website, which is thebarbersarms.co.uk you can watch all the last events and the education on there as well so are we all set for our um, first guest also as well don't forget you can join us on Instagram as well Gaz the British Barber me Sam Michelle Wall and uh, also the Barbers Arms um, and if you want to email us as well for any information if you want to be a local hero or any info about memberships anything like that mem uh, email us at thebarbersarms at BritishBarbers.com. Those are a few of the social media sites. Grand. Just after that, take a breath now, mate. You can, uh, you've done your little spiel. Uh, 
just going back to last week, so I know we're just waiting one more minute for our guest to come on. What a great guest, uh, Mr. Anthony Edgeworth. Uh, I thought I really enjoyed last week's uh, um, episode as well. I thought I'd just uh, get in there. Because yeah, we were both a bit tired, both a bit ratty. Um, it's one of them nights where you go to be for a beer and it's like you probably have a couple and then go home because you don't want to get involved. But I think um, doing what we're doing, he fetched it out of us. And I thought Anthony were a great guest last week. Thoroughly enjoyed him being on. And as yeah. always... Uh, Ali Makim in India, uh, what a super guy he is. Um, everybody tells me when they watch him how, you know, just a, what a wonderful individual he is. Um, so, yeah, it was really good, guys. I, I enjoyed it. But also, on Sunday, how did you, how did you enjoy uh, cutting hair for the first time in a long time? Well, easy. I do, I do cut it now and again. But, um, yeah, it felt good, barring the visor and the, uh, and the old uh, mask that I had to wear on. Well, joining us in the arms then, all the way from New Zealand, we have Adam Johansson, who is the owner of Barbershop Company in New Zealand. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm good. I'm good, thanks, Simon. How are you? I'm absolutely average. How are you, man? <laughs> Better than nice. average. I'm good. <laughs> nice to have you on, Adam. I know uh, you met some of the BBA team. I know you, you know... Gaz has had... Um, Oh, sorry, you froze a bit, Gaz. I thought it was the ice kicking in from your beers. No, I didn't realise you come from the same place, and you were actually born in the probably born in the same uh, uh, hospital as well. It's quite quite a small world, really. Um, really, really glad you could join us on the on the arms tonight. I know your company's really successful. I know you've got um, a, a young lady who works for you, Shamitha, um, who we've. Uh, I know very well from Dubai. Uh, just, just we'll get, we're going to get your, you know, your whole uh, ethos on how your business works. But for all our guys out there, all our international uh, people who are watching, um, give us a, a one-minute bio of yourself and what your company stands for. Yeah, sure. We um, we set up barbershop company about five and a half years ago. Uh, we opened our first store in Millwood, which is just north of Auckland. Um, we've now got 24 operating, um, obviously looking to grow grow further. Um, I guess what we stand for is um, our mission really is to create special moments for every client. So um, it's really about marrying the creative genius of our staff like Shamitha with a bit of process, I suppose, a bit of a sales bend and, and business bend and, and therefore creating value with our clients and, and better outcomes for our team. Fantastic. What um, time is it in New Zealand? I'm sorry, say that again? What time is it in New Zealand? It's seven in the morning on Saturday. What are you drinking? It's Saturday, it's a weekend, so what are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking coffee, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've got three kids, so... <laughs> it's too early for me, unfortunately. Yeah. You know our producer and the, the main man behind BBA is Trevor Studd, who was in Australia. I think he was born in New Zealand. He's drinking... Gary... We've got to tough these guys up. These Kiwis have got to be tough. They come up with all this hacker and all this bollocks. But they're drinking coffee. We're drinking wine, Desperado. We've got moonshine. <laughs> oh, come on. Bring it on, man. <laughs> I think I think it'd be a different story if we if we were working next day anyway, Simon. But we'll have to see. Um, it just depends on if, if we're driving or not. Um, Adam, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, from... I mean, what a great story. I mean, five and a half years, 24 stores, 24 locations. I mean, that's some going in its own. Um, I think, you know, going from what we've been talking to with the guys, you do tend to, um, you get guys from all over the world that, you, that actually work, you recruit from all over the world that come and work for you. How, yeah. how, do, you, how do you actually manage that? How do you reach out to, 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 you know, for people to come and work for you? Um, and in most cases, people reach out to us. Um, New Zealand's a pretty good place to live. Um, so we've got lots of people from the UK, from all over the shop coming, coming to see us. Um, it's gotten a little bit harder at the moment just because of COVID and, and the border restrictions. But um, I, I would say the majority of our team are actually um, from other places. So uh, we, we actually went to um, the show up in Telford uh, a couple of years back and, and it exhibited yeah. Why don't you come down yeah. to New Zealand and, and be a barber and work for us? So, we, yeah, we've got some applicants from that as well. And then well, how did that go? Did you get some people that took up on that? 
We got uh, a couple of, we got lots of applicants. Um, and then I think um, over time um, we had more. So I, I would say it was semi-successful. We actually joke internally that it was probably the most expensive recruiting drive we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> How many nationalities would you say just on average, just working in the group? Uh, at least a dozen. Yeah. I mean, New Zealand's um, really open culture in, in the sense that um uh, quite accepting and, and there's no real class system here. So um, it's, yeah, a nice place to be. And I guess we're all, we're all immigrants anyway, to some degree, because New Zealand's such a new country. Hmm. And ju just, just going from that, you, you're based obviously in the Southern Hemisphere. So where would you say you have most of your barbers from then? Where, where's, your, where's your most successful recruiting area? A lot from the UK. A lot. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, we must have half a dozen at least, maybe even more from the UK that, that have immigrated out and, and uh, making a life down here. Okay. Well, I, I bought, I bought a question, Gaz, to lead him into that, if you don't mind. You know, when somebody's got um, like 24 outlets like you've got, you're telling us now you've got like a dozen different nationalities. Um, kind of like letting people know, or, or maybe got two or three shops in the UK, What's the secret? What's the secret of managing a big group and, and, and managing a big team? What, what would you say one of the biggest fundamental things is that helps you to be successful to keep growing? Yeah, I think we're um, discovering the secrets as we go along. I don't think it's any one thing. I think it's a combination of factors. Um, but a big thing for us is um, having a, a common goal and, and universal purpose. So something that everyone can get behind and, and be a part of. The other thing I'd say is um, um, if, if you think you can run a store and just leave it to be, um, there's just no way. You just cannot do that. Um, you have to be present. Um, you've got to have um, advocates and people that care about your clients and care about what you do. And then I think the one thing that's kind of got us to this point and will get us further is process. Um, designing process and, and making sure that we um, apply design thinking to what we do in store. And all those details matter. To think about all the details um, around a client experience, it all matters. Yeah. Just, 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 just getting back to your background there, Adam. So I'm guessing you're not a barber yourself. You've, you've come into no. No, you've, no. you've come into this business. So is your background from a sales background or? Yeah, it is actually. I um, sort of worked my way up um, sales career. Um, I was national sales manager for a Fortune 500 company and, um, and then I um, decided that corporate life wasn't for me anymore. So I wanted to do my own thing. Yeah. So I suppose I learned a lot through that. Um, I also did some... Uh, process development training called um, Lean Six Sigma, which is basically some quality systems. Lean manufacturer was innovated by Toyota and Six Sigma was GE. So it's all about kind of designing processes to, to work and, and have little rejects. So um, I, I think that we're trying to apply some of that to, to this craft and this um, trade and trying to marry those two, you know, this creative genius sort of trade and, and maybe some process as well. So, yeah. It's, it's funny that, guys. The first time I've ever heard that is uh, we use the lean system all the time at Wall globally. And right. it's the first time I've ever heard anybody outside our group use that terminology, but it does really work. And everything's about the blue ocean and the true north and, and working as lean as, as we can. Um, uh, so, yeah. yeah. I think at that point, it's time for a that. shot, actually, Gaz. You know, yeah. on arms, uh, ads, we, we, we like to have a shot in between. We're on moonshine tonight again. And I'm going to have the last remains of my little wee man roasted uh, apple. <laughs> We're going to have hey, speak, Speaking of wee man, wee man's died today, I think. I know, say. I know. That's why I'm, I'm taking this shot um, in, in his memory. Um, I used to love the jackass stuff. Um, so, yeah, we'll have, we'll have a little shot. And, it, and, and in true jackass style, I'm not going to... I'm, I'm going to take the full last bit of this moonshine. Ready? So, to wee man... To we man. Now, Adam, this interview could all you could you take a shot of coffee, pal. This <laughs> interview could all go downhill now. As, as the red wine, the desperados, 
and the moonshine, which is like liquid diazepam, is kicking in. Yeah. Oh, man. Sounds good. Wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> just, just Adam, while, we, while we're on the, um, we're on uh, the sales and marketing side of things, from a, a barbershop owner as well, and I know we're all multi, multinational, huge company, but I think you do realise when you take on these guys what they need to, to be successful with your company. And I think when you, you involve them with uh, your ethos, I think it's the same with a lot of barbershops and they can take a lot from that is they need multiple skills, don't they? They, they have to be. And barbershops generally don't, we don't have a, a receptionist or we don't have, you know, all the, we have to do everything ourselves almost. So um, I think it's the skills involved to be a successful hairdresser, barber. You have to have all these communication skills. You have to be great at your job anyway. But, you know, with a barbershop point of view as well, you have to be a businessman. And all these things have to, you know, your client, customer care. People underestimate what it takes to be successful in the job, don't they? And to get the right applicants, what kind of thing, if somebody was watching this tonight and they wanted to come to your company, what kind of qualities are you looking for? What kind of qualities are you after? Yeah, as a baseline, you've got to be able to cut hair. So um, in, our, in our world, if you can't cut hair competently, you can't come. Um, and that's simply because we have all this other stuff over and above cutting hair that we need to teach our team. So if you're trying to learn how to cut hair and all that stuff, it's just going to be a mind, it's going to blow your mind too much, you know, and it'll be really hard to function. So first thing is if you can cut hair, great, and then come along. And and I think the other thing is you're ready to um, take your career to the next step. And I know everyone says that, it's kind of cliche, but mm. oh, wait a minute. What I'll say is, um, if you actually want to turn your passion into something that can actually sustain you and have it, you can have a decent career and a good life around it as well. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, and that's our, our process with your craft is to team up. And you're dead right. You can't be an expert at everything. I, I can't cut here. I'm not, you know, and a lot of our team are these creative geniuses. They're generous people. They're givers, you know, and and they love to give this feeling and experience to their clients. And, and we need those people. And if you can marry that with, I guess, my head and, and home office head, then we can be successful as a team. And that's really what it's about because you did right. You just cannot be an expert at everything. I think some of the big groups in the UK, especially coming out of London as well, you know, uh, Andrew, who runs Ruffians in London, is a non barber. And uh, same kind of ethos as what you've got. It's, it's the business model. It's, it's just leading off what Gaz has said and, and the way he's built that up. That I, um, we, don't, we don't know each other's questions, but it leads perfect into my next question is that. How do you keep yourself motivated? So you've got 24 shops. Um, you've got multinationals working for you. You obviously travel and, and, and promote the business and the brand to pick up new new people coming to work for you. But what motivates Adam? What keeps you motivated and keeps you going? Um, I, I've always been into business. Like I always loved business. It sounds really dry and it is, I suppose. But um, I always wanted to be in business. And... Um, ever since I was a young fellow, I suppose. So that that's kind of where my passion came from. What keeps me going, I suppose, is um, I feel like actually what we're doing is quite important work. I think um, it may not be the same where you guys are, but in our, in our neck of the woods, I think this industry is a little bit underdeveloped and underdone. And I think um, um, the craft isn't, isn't really um, valued like some other trades are, like plumbing or electrical or even hairdressing to some degree. So I think there's an opportunity really to um, elevate the industry and, and actually elevate the people that, that that do this. So I think it's a noble cause and, and um, you yeah, know, I enjoy business. And I think the other thing is that there are a lot of corporations out there that leave a big footprint behind them you know, um, and a negative footprint. And I don't think that's what we're doing. I think we're creating special moments every day by the thousand. And, and I like that. That makes me feel good. I think, Gaz, I, I did a, uh, an article today for uh, the UAE and it was all about uh, National Barber Day. And you just picked on some of there, Adam, where you said about your area. Because my next question that I'm going to come to is a minute is, what's the barbering standard like in New Zealand? But one thing you said there is, and, and the, the topic I said to spike the conversation was about education, but on threefold education on how we've done a fantastic job in PR in barbering now across the globe 
where Barbie 15 years ago were uh, not, not the kind of career, but now we've created rock star barbers. Secondly, the education on barbering in terms of what we've done and how barbers are using social media, not only to promote their brand and their individuality, but also to get clients in. And thirdly, as a brand, and as individuals, the education that's available for barbers to further their careers, once they've qualified, you can become specialists in faded, shaving, you know, uh, all, all different types of things. So uh, it, it's just poignant today that I've done this article today and just something you've just said there, Adam, about barbering, but uh, it was a very easy question for me today. It's what kind of thing would you start this conversation on National Barber Day? And mine was purely education on threefold. You know, and, and, and it's massive. The industry is massive. I I, th I think I think as well. I'm I'm not quite I'm not familiar with New Zealand. I know I've worked in Australia, Adam. But um, what's the kind of what's the standard in New Zealand? Who who controls the standard? I know in um, in the UK we have it's government led, and you know there's people like myself and different people sit on as occupational experts and write the standards. I mean, we've got a, a, a learned gentleman who's a barber who's watching us tonight, Mr. John McNally. He sits on our uh, parliamentary group. He, he helps the, the barber council no end. He's a fantastic guy. Uh, he's at SNP. He's, he's a lovely fella. But what, ha what actually, what, who, who looks after the barbering industry in New Zealand? How's that going over there? Administered? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, we do have levels, so there are standards that are set by by HITO, I suppose, or the government. Um, but I would probably argue that our clients really set the standard or set the the bar. So if we're doing the right things, our clients come back and um, and you know it's probably led by by the user to be to some degree. We're not as I don't know if we're as organised perhaps as uh, the UK, for example. Um, so there's opportunity there. Do, do you have do you have an apprenticeship standard do you do you do you use apprenticeships out there actually apprenticeships are coming back and the government here is putting some money into it and and really promoting vocational training so that's going to be a part of our future i'm sure i, I think that's fantastic you're heading in the right direction then fantastic. yeah yeah exactly yeah i mean there's you know the thing is that the technical side of things so the Training development from a technical standpoint across our group we've got lots of people and we've got technical experts in many different areas i mean shamitha for example is a, you know loves the hot shave and she's he's great at that so you know across our group we've got experts in different areas and and you know you're saying that there's rock stars coming up in the industry I, I still think we've got a long way to go i think we've still got lots of opportunity and there's going to be more i think it's going to get bigger and bigger just, just quick simon before you you go yeah yeah um, Shamitha is a young lady who, who uh, Adam's just brought up. She, she's a real success, success story. She originated from Sri Lanka, ended up in Dubai. I've, I've worked with Shamitha in, uh, in the Arab Emirates. She, she's an absolutely lovely girl, um, great skills, like you said, great at shaving. And then she's ended up in New Zealand. So, I mean, for all the people out there, I mean, the sky is the limit, really, for the industry as well. You can work all over the world. You can travel meet people and, and work for great companies. And she, she's, you know, the epitome of, a, of a, a great barber traveling all over the world as well. And you've ended up with, with, with a great barber there. I think also the, um, the sense of community in our company and I suppose in other barbershops around the world, it's, it's quick to form, you know, through WhatsApp and new technology. You know, all our barbers have all got WhatsApp groups all around the place. And so when people arrive into a new country, can be a bit scary but if you've got like of people around you and you can whatsapp them straight away and go and have a beer or whatever it's makes it a bit easier and i suppose that's one of the appeals of new zealand so adam we we, do, we don't normally do this but um you seem like a really great guy and um i think it's really it's really important to do this as well when me and guys come but um for I don't know if you've been watching Barber's Arms, but we've had nearly 4 million views since we started this show at the beginning of lockdown. So it's oh, a massive... And every, and every week we get 100,000 just to, uh, to canter, unless we get our Indian colleagues on where we get like maybe half a million views. But for all the views that we're going to get tonight, we've got lots of people in the UK watching at the Minute Live and also as well um, the views that you're going to get for a week. If people wanted to apply to you, how would they apply to you um, for, for a job? This is a 
This is a freebie for you now. Here you go. Yeah, load your boots. Go to barbershop.co.nz and, and learn about our company. And, and if it's for you, then, then then apply online. Yeah, we um, absolutely want, want more people. Um, I just sort of mentioned it before that there's a bit of admin around um, immigration at the moment. So um, it's a bit challenging, but we've got to ex expect that that's going to pass in time and we're back to business as usual, hopefully. Yeah. How are you guys faring with that? Yeah, do you, do you know what? Have, have, you, have you got a guest slot for me and him for, you know, a three oh, weeks? Oh, 100%. Come on down. <laughs> It'd be awesome. Yeah. Listen, have you seen it? It's like we are a double act now. So wherever he goes, <laughs> I'm going. And wherever I go, he's going. Now, he travels nearly as much as me. So I think as partners, um, I don't know about Gary's boyfriend, but as partners would be, uh, we'd, we'd never be at home. It's been a weird time, mate, because obviously my job as Global Artistic Director for Wall. Um, I would say that three to four months a year I am out of the UK and not in one block. So it's like every two or three weeks you, you travel up somewhere. So, um, yeah, it's been weird. It's, it's, it's been a, a funny period of time. And, uh, and, and of course, it's, we're very fortunate with our jobs. And I've learned as I get older to add a couple of days on some of the nice areas and stay over. So if I'm in Dubai, I'll normally stay about three or four days afterwards or go a couple of days before. So yeah, I've missed a, I missed a lot of that. Um, I've missed a lot Me of that too. traveling. We're going to put yeah. a link as well. So I think uh, anybody who's watching tonight and uh, watching through the week as well. So to have a look at Adam and the Barbershop Company in New Zealand, there will be a link on our website, which is thebarbersarms.co.uk. You can have a look at the link, click into it and then apply to, if you fancy it, going down to New Zealand. I think it might be a 2021 um, thing, that. I don't know. Are the borders closed in New Zealand? I know they are in Australia. Unless you have a visa or you're a, uh, or you're a citizen, you, you can't actually come into New Zealand at the minute. Um, so, um, but, you know, hopefully we'll, that will change in the, in the near term. There's not a lot of cases here, to be honest. Like, our community transmission was one case yesterday, so... Um, we are lucky, I suppose, in that regard. Um, so if you can get here, it's worth coming. But uh, but yeah, a bit hard at the minute. What you'll have well, to do is you'll have to put some incentives on the website. So when you click into this one, if you can get a visa and get to us now, there'll be this little amount here for you and then this little carrot here and then a car here for you. You'll have to just sell it. Sell it, Adam. Put some on there. Get on. Yeah, 100%. And, well, um, go on. Yeah, so you guys are both based in the UK, right? And and you in London, or we we based? Oh no, um, we're we're in, a, we're we're in a better place than London. We're up north. We are. We're we're in oh. two two little places you would never have heard of probably. But when we're in nice. the southern hemisphere, you can guarantee we're going to be knocking on your door. We're yeah, I hope so. Because yeah. I mean, you've just opened up, aren't you? After your second lockdown, Adam, you just yeah. reopened because you opened back up. Then you had a lockdown. And then yep. you just reopen because one of the things that me and Gaz have been saying to everybody, you know, we just had some more rules coming to the UK and it's getting a bit touchy. Winter coming up and stuff, people relaxing too much. Uh, we don't want a second lockdown, but tell us, you've just you just reopened back up. Yeah, we. Um, I, th I actually think the government's um, handling it pretty well here um, because if there are big cases in the community, I don't think people will be confident to go out and get haircuts. So it'll, it'll damage our business you know, quite badly. So I think they are locking us down, which is disruptive. And it's a bit of a, a mind uh, exercise because, you know, pe people like us got kids at home trying to teach them, teach them. And oh, it's just a challenge. eh? But, um, but in saying that, I, I think, um, you know, locking down and making sure that the transmission doesn't go across the community is probably, probably helping us in the long term. Yeah. Jim, so, so we, just, just quick, just quickly, Adam. How do you think um, consumer confidence in the UK at the moment? I'd, I'd say we're working at probably between seventy and eighty percent of our capacity before lockdown uh, as an industry. Uh, some people more, some people less. Um, but um, what what would you say consumer confidence is like in New Zealand at the moment with this second with this second lockdown? How long were you actually closed for? So our first lockdown was seven and a half weeks, so um, quite a long time. And then our second lockdown was just over two weeks. So it's kind of crazy. What would happen is we'd get locked down, everyone would be at home, and then we'd open and we'd have this massive boom, like humongous boom for 
two weeks. The end of May, we did 92% of a normal month in two weeks. So it's just massive. But we just can't do that enough haircuts. You know, and then everyone's had a haircut. So June was really quiet for us. And then J- July sort of got back to normal. But I would say our confidence here is probably a bit higher just because there's not a lot of community cases. Mm. Um, so they are locking us down. And then when they open us up, it's like we're feeling pretty safe. Um, but but it's taken its toll on people. Our barbers have to wear masks every day. I don't know if it's the same where you are, but yeah, it's yeah. just exhausting for them. You know, it's awful. Yeah, but we have to do it to protect the, our clients and you, each other. You've got to do it. I mean, it's masks and visors, and obviously, in my role as education, one of the things that I did last week, I did a cut for our education day, and obviously, Gaz is you know he's got five salons and he's been back in it since Fourth of July. But I had the cut, I had the mask on and the visor on. And, I, and I, I said afterwards, you know, a big up respect. You know, I tried one on. I've been looking at RPP and I've been walking around with them. But actually doing a cut and talking. Um, I, massive respect to all the barbers. I know we've, Gaz mentioned it earlier. There's been a bit of an announcement today where you can wear a mask and goggles in the UK. But still, you know, um, it's been tough for everybody to do what they've had to do, Adam. Very tough. It is tough. I, I actually... Um... So for me, it's been a, the biggest challenge for me has been mental because just going working from home and looking after our kids and doing all the stuff and then going back to work. And but then I think for our barbers, it's probably mental and physical just because of that, that PPE. It's just bloody tough, eh? Yeah. Hopefully tough. it doesn't last too long, but I, I think we have to, we have to, you know, muck in. It's, gonna, it's not going to go away, is it, in the near term? Well, I read something earlier, guys, a little clip, and I'm going to actually send it over to, to the producer just to put it up tonight, but it's really poignant is that, you know, uh, the, the, the government can't change it. The police can't change it. It's us that can change it, your habits, yeah. you know, mm. respecting rules, respecting things in your job. And we're starting seeing it now, Adam, in England, and uh, not too far away from Gaz in Bolton. You know, you've got like parts of Bolton closed down, restaurants are starting to close back down again. And it'll not be far away because of our industry, this, the close proximity we're working, is that yeah. that will be looked upon straight away. So it's, it's important that barbers listen to us tonight and listen and say, buckle back up, stick to your rules, get real back to the 4th of July PPE that you did and, and get back on it. You have to because uh, if you don't, if you don't, and um, if it spreads through you, it will kill your business because um, you you know we're in a position to be a super spreader because we've got so much traffic going through our stores. You just cannot flout that those rules and and take that risk. It'll it's just not worth it. You can't do it. Yeah. Do you know some Adam? You just said some Gary. I can't mention it for legal reasons, but you know a pub that you went into on my birthday, Silver Jackie. Um, there was an outbreak ten days ago in that pub, and some lads have all got it seven or eight of them, some at Bar Staff have got it. One of my friends went in yesterday and the place was dead because the word's gone round that COVID has come from that establishment. And so yeah. it's, it's it, and this, you've been into it guys, it's a real smart bar, does food, it's got live events on and it was dead last night apparently. And Thursday night's a really busy night in the UK for that bar and it, and it, and it was dead. So you're absolutely spot on. It will kill your business if it comes from your business. Uh, and, and do you know what? I think people, we, we don't give our clients enough um, respect sometimes in them noticing this as well. When, you, when, they come into, when they come into our locations and you are, you know, you work, you're using all disposable gowns, dispo, all disposable products when you're shaving, you, you've got your visor on, your mask on. People notice that. People realise what, you know, you're keeping your door open, you're signing in, you're appointment only, you take, you're capturing all their information. People notice this and they don't notice it until something happens bad in somewhere else and they'll go, oh, do you know what? My barber's not like that. They follow all the rules. It's great. And people recognise that. And cons- consumer confidence, I think, comes and is bred from that. And as, as you've said, Sam, quite rightly so, you know, some people say, uh, you know, um, when you have some some bad uh, information or it, you go to somewhere and, you know, it's people. If you have a good haircut, you tell a few people. If you have a bad haircut, you tell everybody, don't you? OK. And it's exactly the same, I think, with the COVID situation. If, if you're looking good and you, you're following the rules, people give you good reviews as well. So, 
I think that's really important to, to notice as well. It is. Adam, you've been a great guest, mate, John. I know it's early up there for you. And the, 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 the little area behind you, the hotel reception area, I've had many a happy times in an hotel reception area when I'm waiting to go to a function yeah. Or when I've sat down and ordered a few drinks and actually got pissed in that area before I've actually gone into the function area. So this, hotel this lobbies actually, have always been... Sorry? This is actually the Bowery Bar um, in New York. So it's quite a cool little hotel in, in, you know, in the Bowery, which is a part of Manhattan. Down, you know, sort of, it's a cool place. So, yeah. I go there it. if you go to New York. Yeah. We, always, we always finish off uh, Barber's Arms with our guests to get a little profile on our guest that's here. So some quick fire questions. Are you ready? Yep, go for it. First thing that comes to you, right from your heart, yeah. Okay. What's your favourite holiday destination? Where do you like to go away to? Fiji. Fiji. Nice. What's your favourite food? Ooh. If I'm honest, and my wife's not listening, KFC. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. What's your favourite drink? If you're having a beer with us or a, a drink tonight, what would you be drinking? What's your favourite drink? Um, I'm actually a red wine man. I quite like a good Pinot from, from New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice wine out there. Well, we get it over here, but it's uh, normally little New Zealand, which is uh, not as nice as probably what you'll get. <laughs> What's your favourite music? Uh, rock. Rock and roll, mate. All day. Rock and roll. Hey, listen, guys, if Ross is watching, I found out, and he'll probably say he's been out for his... There's a guy in Scotland, you need to get him on YouTube, uh, Adam. It's called Jerry Cinnamon. Absolutely amazing. A Scottish guy, what, what a singer he is. You'll love his music. Cool. Um, so we've got Adam Johansson, the owner of Barber Shop Company. The link will be on our website for you to look if you want to um, have a new career in New Zealand with this fantastic company. Um, I'm just going to give you, uh, you're in Fiji, you're having a KFC, you're drinking a nice glass of Pinot, you listen to some nice rock and roll. And who would you like to do all that with? Who's your ideal dinner date? Oh, mate, my wife, 100%. Yeah, all wow. day. Another yeah. pussy on Barbara's arms will pick his <laughs> wife. I'm going to leave you on the Saturday afternoon to find your balls this afternoon, see what's happening. But Adam Johansson from the Barber Shop, thanks for coming on Barber's arms. Thank you very much. Thanks, Norman. Take care. Nice to meet you both. Nice to Adam, you, it's been a, Adam, it's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you very much for giving us your time. Cheers, Gary. Take care. Bye bye. Have a good night. Good night, mate. 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 I, I start. I do it to Trev, you know. When Trev phones me up, I, you know, I feel like, all right. Uh, good night, mate. I don't even know I'm doing it. It's like Tourette's. <laughs> it's like me twitch. I do it everybody. If I'm in Scotland, I like Colin. Hey, do, do, do you know what, though? You, I, I, there's a lot of Sheila's out there. She, Sheila Blige is the best one I've ever met. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can they? I, 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 are they yours? They've been waiting for, <laughs> for ages. Oh dear. Anyway, I'll tell you what? I, honestly, I put on on the feed tonight. I've just been saying my face feels red raw. It's ages since I've had some red wine, and I, I knew you went out for a cheeky drink tonight as well, didn't you? After work. Uh, yeah, I, I, I will admit tonight I'm missing missing Friday night with the lads and. Because we give up Friday nights like in lockdown, it was uh, it was it was quite good. It was great, and I loved having a drink with you. But you know what? You know when you go in the pub and you see them usual faces that only there on a Friday night. I was it, like, I, I, ju I just I've just got to get nip in and have a couple of beers with them. And it was it was uh, it was good. It was good. It was. Uh, I enjoyed having a couple of pints with them, but. What a, what a nice fella Adam was. I mean, what a great concept he's got. 24 salons in five and a half years. That's some going. You know, I'm lucky enough to work with some of the top groups in the country. And, um, uh, you know, I mentioned Andrew from Ruffians and the, the fantastic team he's got there and Muz and Al who, who run RW Wolf in, in London. And um, you'll find that most of them are not barbers as well. They come from a, a marketing background and they just run the business. And I, I try and sit to barbers sometimes, take the emotion out of it. If you want a successful business, you've got to take your emotion out of it. You've got to run the shop as a business. And I always say to anybody, Gary, if you've got 30 grand to open up a shop, what most barbers do, they put the emotion in and they spend 33 grand on doing the shop up, right? I'll always say to people, get some really good chairs. Make sure it looks good. 
But if you've got 30 grand, split it straight out middle. You get 15 grand on your shot refit and 15,000 quid. Education to your team and PR and marketing. Split it 50-50. If you're going to have a successful business, you need to do that. And he's a typical example of, of that, um, that form. <laughs> criteria the red wine's kicking in i don't mind asking telling you most <laughs> times the red wine and trev keeps saying take another swirl it's like we're working tonight and it's like listen oh, listen you gotta have the roasted apple come on roasted apple in for, in for, in for a penny in for a pound no right. can we do a tough no um, all right then tough this is no. beautiful oh. this oh i think i think i think i've been naughty lad i think i've drunk my tough no <laughs> Like one of them kids at, at Christmas Eve when you were at Quality <laughs> Street. <laughs> well, the twirls gone, gathering car, I've had them all. I've, I've oh. drunk me tough nut. Uh, I'll, I'll drink, uh, I'll drink me roasted apple while you do your tough nut. Roasted apple's gone for me. It's beautiful. I'm hoping there's another Amazon delivery on its way. Uh, nudge, nudge, Jacks. I've sent you a nice rolls gold dryer today. Um, here we go. We've got tough nut. Oh. Just, just quickly, uh, I know oh, it's like, so nice. Oh, it's beautiful. It reminds me of Christmas. Oh, I've been, do you know uh, what I'm going to do with that, Gary? What? I'm going to put it in one of those little candle things, you know, where you can burn it underneath. A that smell and taste is so Christmassy. It's beautiful. Tough nut, roasted apple. Love well, it. well, I tell you what, you're the last person I thought to be lighting a candle or having one of those smelly things anyway. But Candles just anyway... Everywhere. Quickly, quickly uh, we've got we've got Mr. Rick Roberts watching tonight, and he's just posted. Uh, he's actually had a visit, so he's he's had so he's had the counselling, and they've actually visited his salon at the moment. So it is happening out there, guys, and I'm sure he passed with flying colours because he's got a fantastic salon. He's total professional, and he's doing everything right. But it is actually happening. People are getting visited. People are getting checked. And there will be repercussions if you're not following the guidelines. So please, please, don't be the one responsible in your area for getting this closed down again. Don't give the government any excuse to give our industry a bad name, please. Yeah, well done, Rick. I know Rick's an ambassador of ours and he, he does the right thing. And in, 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 I tell you what, Rick had all that period of time and most of the time he was working in his shop, refurbing it, making it COVID-friendly and uh, he's, he's, a, he's a great um, ambassador for it. So... Look, if it's happened to Rick, it's happened to him. Guys, it's coming to that time of the evening where you're going to show us a beautiful um, cocktail of the week. And I'm yeah. going to cocktail myself. Yeah, you get, go, get back road, you. You're all right. Right, ladies and gents. So we've got the cocktail of the week. We've got fig and honey. Now, the only reason the, you know, if you've read the digest this week, um, the reasons behind the cocktail. A lot of the time, it could be the guest. It could be the weather, it could be how I'm feeling, it could be all sorts of things. It could be what I've got in the cupboard sometimes, you know, when I get home late from work. But tonight we made a real effort. Rachel, the bar lady, or the barman, or the bar lass, um, she's actually sorted the ingredients out because our next door neighbour to me mum and dad who on the farm, they passed them a full bag of figs, would you believe? So they come from next door. So what we've done is... We've liquidized two figs. We've mashed them up, as you can see there, with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of water. So we've got figs there in our mixer. So we're going to add a full portion of lime juice straight in. We've got our vodka. So full. So if you do any one and one, we've got two figs, one of lime, one of vodka. Good quality vodka. We've got cloud vodka, our local vodka. We've got some ice, which we're going to throw in there. And we've got our secret ingredient, which is our agar of nectar, which is honey or whatever sweetener you like. So I like it. So quick little dollop in there. And we've got our shaker top. So we're going to sh sh throw this in, make sure it's on nice and tight. Put our shaker on. So we're going to shake it up. And we're not going to, I'm not going to talk while we're doing that because what we need to do is we need to get the ice in there so it's infusing and we crush the ice before it isn't big ice cubes. We crush the ice before 
So it actually makes the whole thing nice and cool. So we've got our cooled cocktail glass here. We're, gonna, we're not going to use the sieve tonight. We're going to use it through the top of the shaker. So we're going to just pour this in nice and steadily. We don't want any of the ice in there. We just want all the liquor. So we're just going to put, and we're going to agitate that at the same time. So it gives us a little bit of froth on the top as well. So as you can see, it's flowing through because we've got so much fruit in there as well. And if you like the fruit, you can tip this in. You can, you can drink it straight from the shaker if you want to. It's up to you. But if you don't, you know, I, I can't usually wait this long. I have to drink it straight out of the shaker because it, I love it. But Naturally. Is, yeah, well, if this was if this was for my lovely missus, which is Rachel, I would make it as smooth and as made with care as much as possible. We're going to put a little bit of drop of ginger beer in. I don't want any ginger beer in it, really, but we have to have it for the actual job. So one. we've got a little mixing spoon there just to take it from the bottom to the top, just give it a little bit of a mix. And there we have it. We have our fig and honey cocktail. Look at, look at that, baby. How's that? that? Fantastic. Tenor in Leeds. Tenor. Well, it'd be about 12 quid in Stoke with a portion of moon dust. Oh, but it's... To use um... it, it's a bit of a dwarf shot, that, to be fair, but in one, Gaz. Well, it, this is to the wee man, so to dwarfs all around the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm sure you're all enjoying that at home, watching Gaz do that. And now you need to stay tuned in till that kicks in. That should be about three or four minutes before that kicks in. <laughs> Won't take that long. We're all good. So if you made your perfect cocktail, what would you have? What, what would you want me to do for you next week? But we're not on next week, by the way. I, I love a porn star martini. I don't like a porn star martini. Oh, it's my favourite. And, and I know it's Big Errol as well. I know it's his favourite as well. So it, I think we're going to have to have a, re, a reoccurrence of the porn star on, on the show. Or if I'm somewhere nice and warm as well, I'm, I'm a sucker for strawberry daiquiris. It's, um, it's, it's a must. And there's some places that do it really, really well. Um, I, I love a pina colada in uh, Florida. I, I sound like Nana of Royal Family. I don't really drink, but I just have a glass of sherry at funerals. I have a, a whiskey at, uh, um, at weddings and stuff like that. So anyway, we're back to our local heroes. And uh, joining us in the Barber's Arms for the first time, down in the deepest depths of Wales, we have Jim the Trim. Jim, are you there? James Williams, are you in the house? I'm here. Can you hear me? Jim, like a can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Right, that's good. That's the main thing. <laughs> How you doing, all right? Yes, we're very well. How are you? All right. <laughs> yeah, good. Nice to be back. Welcome to, the, welcome to the Barber's Arms. Thank you for having me. <laughs> can, you, can you take your phone onto a sideways angle? Yeah, so it's, on. On. Yeah, it's my fault. I should have done it. Like that. Yeah. Um, not no, quite yet. Right. No, you, you, you're not. You, you turn it again. Or oh, we'll we'll go with that one. That's my phone. The phone's up like this, right? That's fine, mate. Then, I that fine. Way, you know. No, you're making me feel like. dizzy, Jim. I've had, I've had, I just Jim, I've had I just some moonshine. Size, We've had some moonshine and wine tonight. Stop, stop it with you pinning around. Um. <laughs> Jim, how are you? What's happening in Wales? Oh, not a lot, like, you know, busy, busy. I think that's the main thing. Just glad to be back in the shop. I think that's, I think that's what everybody wanted. Um, obviously, it'd be nice being home with the baby as well. No, that, was, that was great. So, congratulations. A lot of my bit. Thank you, mate. <laughs> How's everything with you? <laughs> well, we're, we live in the dream here on Barber's Arms every Friday. Yeah. Uh, episode 23, we're getting, uh, we're getting paid to have a drink, so it's the best job Fantastic. we've ever had in the world. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so Jim, uh, congratulations on, uh, on your new baby. So, how's, how's lockdown affected you and how's business at the moment? Um, well, lockdown, I took a lot of pauses on lockdown. Like I said, I... I you know, I had, I had my little boy, um, so I looked at things like spending at home time with my family. You know, I think that's 
a lot of people took that, you know, as an important factor. I think a lot of people missed out on those opportunities. Um, and then work-wise, uh, coming back, I couldn't, like, nothing's changed. I think if anything, I'd be busier. So, we, um, you know, we made a transition to online bookings, we, uh, even though we were doing um, appointments anyway. But everything now is a lot more organised. Customers know where they are. Customers are paying online with us, which is great. I've had less no shows. So, um, like, I can't really fault it, to be honest, at the moment. It's uh, great. Perfect. So, how, how's the autism go? How's the autism charity going? Yeah, it's been good. It's still been taking over slowly. It's um, it's been hard to try and um, keep on top of it, to be honest. It's um, I, I think trying to manage it between the shop and stuff like that. It's um, it's trying to find the balance. And it's, again, now especially with family life involved as well. Um, but yeah, the stickers are still going out. Um, you know, we're still raising that money for charity. So I said like, you know, once. Once we get a certain sum, you know, we always send it out to local charities, you know, to benefit, you know, for, for children with autism. So it's still, you know, it's still, we're still trying to do what we can. Um, I still haven't changed anything in the shop as a whole. You know, I still do my autism Sundays. Um, you know, still making the breakthroughs, which is all it is key. I think you've got to be commended on, on what you do there, mate, because I think you've, you've raised a lot of awareness especially in barbering um, about what you've done you were the original person that's been doing that so that's off to you mate in terms of what you've done there um, and I know you're always striving to, to do better I know you want to be on stages you want to be ambassadors for everybody um, you, you're in your shop at a minute can we have a quick look around your shop what's you done just flip it around yeah perfect all right yeah uh, so we've got a, obviously we've got a two stations here. On TV. Um, let's say we have set, you know, obviously we've set our guidelines out. We've got our sanitizing machine, um, masks, sportful gowns. Um, obviously we've, we've obviously limited in the shop as well at the moment, so we've got like um, obviously less staff in. So obviously we're trying to work two meter distance uh, in general. Um, Obviously, the shop still we still got a few bits and bobs in the shop to excuse if it doesn't look as great. <laughs> I mean, we've, still, we've got like obviously the box up there and that, but uh, you know, we all like say we've got to remove this chair down here for the time being just because we're trying to make the two meter gap for obviously the parent. Um, as you can see, so, so Tim, you know, on your autism yeah. Sundays, yeah, what happens? Tell us what happens there. Basically, well, it's this this is what this is what. This is where the magic happens, basically. We don't, we don't put the kids in the chair. Um, it's basically just me in the shop on my own. Um, so, again, when it's nice and quiet like this, so, again, it reduces our sensory overload. Um, and I just let the kids basically have that freedom. I think that's the key part to autism. It's telling people not to put them in the chairs, make them scared, and think outside the box a little bit and, you know, understand from a child's perspective. I mean, it's not just... Children with autism, it's general children. I mean, I got loads of kids that come in who are terrified, and there's nothing worse than putting them in the chair. So I'm quite happy to go in the corner, sit on the floor with them, and you just and they have their iPad and they're happy. I mean, it's, it's, it's very simple, it's, it's patient you, as well. I mean, you guys will know Gaz as well, but have you not noticed that? Do you not think that the barbering, you know, like it used to be years ago where dads had take their sons in, do you not think that it's Breaking that tradition where kids aren't as scared now to go into barber shops, that the environment's different, and you know, mm. young lads are going in with, with the with the dads more often, which is what we really want. We've got that more sense of community there, and it's that yeah. kind of like it's that barbering club where you go in with your dad for your hair cutting, and your barber gives you, you know, a bit of gel, and you have your hair looking cool, and you know, do you not think that that's coming back? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I say like we've, you know, on my booking app. Obviously, I think like the great thing with the app is that you can create services now. And like we've, I added the um, the father and son service, and I think it's a great thing. And I wrote in the, right in the comments saying like, you know, about like everything you just said. But then I was saying is basically, you know, having that father and son experience, um, just for general children. Um, again, it's obviously with autistic children, it's a lot harder. I mean, because obviously, um, they obviously don't get the same experience in that way. But um, yeah, no, I think it's, we've, since we've done that, so we've got a lot, we've got a lot more of that again now. Um, I think that's the great thing about online bookings that you can have, they can read the description, they can see what what to book, and it's, I think it's fantastic for really. So, can you open one of your drawers for us again? 
Open one of your styling drawers. Let's see what's in your drawers. The styling drawers, right? You don't, you don't want to see the one on the left because it's full of crap. <laughs> I'm not going to show you that one. No, we like to see that on Barbara's arms. <laughs> oh, you can see that one, yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's a few stuff, you know, a few stuff in there. Like, you know, we've got the layout, our general layouts. <laughs> but the drawers, honestly, like some of the stuff we got in here, like... <laughs> You know, so, so, so what? So what clippers are you using then, Jim? Say again. What clippers are you using? You're gonna put me on the spot now, Jim. <laughs> obviously, I, so you may still use Wild. Don't worry. Um, obviously, I just, I have just joined with Gamma. So. Oh. I knew it was, was gonna be dropping. <laughs> look, I still got him here. Look, I've got a wide collection. I've got a look. You know, so you know this. Look, it's Wild, Wild, Wild. It's everywhere. Still wow. <laughs> Good. I'm glad that the uh, Gamma ambassadors are using our wall. I love it. <laughs> Fucking magic TV. Oh, look. Oh, look. I see what I there. <laughs> no, look. Still, look. All clippers are good, man. I'm not going to like that. The thing, the thing <laughs> is, uh, the thing is as well, <laughs> Jim, and then you, uh, you, do, you, you do all the autistic bits as well. I think what Simon was getting at as well is building a relationship with um, your clients and, and bringing the oh, yeah, fathers yeah. and sons together. I think I think that's happened. I think that's happened all the time, hasn't it? I know, I know coming from a family barbers, we've done that. Uh, my brother's got a, an autistic son as well, and it's all about um, with, with autistic kids as well. Depending on where they are on the spectrum, it's about doing what they do all the time. It's about repetition. It's about where they go. It's about who they're with. It's about yeah, who they see. It's about... And I think building that up as well at the same time, I think it's... And I think all of that is building a relationship with your barber as well, isn't it? it, it even yeah. whether they're autistic or normal kids or whatever. Some normal kids can be the worst, whatever normal is, uh, can be the worst in the world and they could cry and shout and everything else. But it's about being a family barber. It's about if you want to target that particular kind of trade. I, I know barber shops that will turn away kids. I mean, I think I find it crazy because they're the future. But it, it's, it's about building a relationship, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, no, I understand. No, I totally agree with you. It's you know, it's I can. I, I think that's the one thing I love about it now. It's like you know, I, it's like I've lost count how many autistic children I've worked with now, and but I love the challenge because it's about. When that first kid comes in, the parent always says, "Oh, you're never going to be able to cut his hair." And I'm like, "Bring it on, try it." You know, I'm I'm, I'm all for the challenge. You're never going to step on any challenge. Just put in front of me, and I want to make that breakthrough because I want to make a difference to someone to someone's life. Because in the, the day, it's people don't realise how difficult a haircut is for somebody with autism. You know, and, and it's because they look the same as us. When they get taken in places, they get judged instantly, and, that's, and I think it's you know it's it's very selfish in a way, really. You know I mean? So. Um, so yeah, when you build that relationship with that client, you know, and then I've had kids now sit on the floor, they'll sit in a the chair, they've got one by Aaron, you know, he's, he sits in my chair, he has a skin fit, and then I, and he's a kid I could never touch. So it shows it's, it's possible. If you, if it works. Yeah, it's good. Fair play to you, mate. You've done a great, great job with that, Jim. You're a great um, guy. I think you've done really well with your career. And um, I know you always, um, you always uh, represent Wales very well with whatever you've done. We wish you all the best with your career with uh, from Barbara's Arms. I think you've done a, a good job so far. So keep keep plugging away, mate. And uh, we'll hope to see you, hopefully, when me and Gaz are out and about, and uh, you're out and about, we hope to see you at an exhibition in 2021. And um, we wish you all the best. Yeah, and have a, have a great... Fo and congratulations on your newborn. Um, I'm sure you're going to have a busy busy time from now till end of the year and, and, and have a great yeah. time with that as well. <laughs> 100%. Jim, Jim, what's, what's your lad name? Uh, Noah. Noah. Congratulations oh. on Noah, mate. Enjoy. Congratulations, Thanks, Jim. Jim the Trim. Good time. How you doing? It's nice to take it like international as well, isn't it? Taking it to Wales and that. Yeah, another country, another step. Hey, can I just say something to you? You last can. week, last week when I was out in St Albans, so we met some of uh, my team. We was with Sam, but Jake Lansley and Ben Morrison joined us for a, for a beer uh, from a social distance point of view. And um, they said to me, 
we're really struggling to understand you tonight because normally you're like, we can understand everything you're saying, but you, your accent's really strong. And I think what's happened over COVID, uh, the lockdown, is that I've spent so much time in Yorkshire that my accent has got really, really strong. So I'm having to, uh, like, I'm doing a lot of work in front of the camera and playing it back um, just so I can understand myself because when I speak and I get excited, I'm very, hey. very York. Hey. <laughs> exactly. What do you say? Well, we say stuff like, in, in Yorkshire, if you say to somebody like, shut up, We'll go share it or is that? Uh, and and do, I do, have. Do you, do you know what makes me laugh about when when you talk about it? I know we shouldn't laugh about this, but you go hospital. I know Hos we Hos hospital. hospital. I think I say caravan, like it's like a caravan. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, um, you know, just keep uh, watching Jerry Cinnamon and uh, just keep trying to work on my vocab before I actually get back out on that. Don't forget to share Barbers Am tonight. This is our 23rd episode, me and Gaz. Love being here every 23 weeks. We've got our um, global education coming up on the 20th and the 21st. There's still time to register for that, guys. There's over a thousand people registered for this. It's going to be one of the biggest events ever in barbering and hairdressing um, to be coordinated over two days. We've got some of the massive names in the industry. You know, just to name a few, Rick Roberts, uh, we've got Geoff Davis on there, we've got Jack Ludlow from Norway, Frank Reimer down in uh, London, we've got some Americans on there as well. On day two, uh, we've got Jay Ramos coming in from New York, Anthony Ace from California, Bobby Thompson, Ali Elliott uh, from China, we've got some Australians on there, including Paul Dare, and we've got our fantastic Indian guys, Joey Habib and Alan Akim. That's all going to be on the 20th and 21st, a 24-hour fantastic event. If you want to join us as well from what we did on Sunday when me and Gaz hosted our first education day, which is still free of charge, by the way. So is membership at the BBA, still free of charge. Um, we had all the guests there. You can watch all the videos about Michael Damiano doing his fade, Afro fade, Gaz doing his signature shave, myself doing the mode, one of our new cuts from Wall, Eric Lander doing the Modern Rocker. And then we had Sam Campagna who recreated the mode, um, sorry, the uh, Lloyd from the front cover of Modern Barber. And then me and Gaz wrapped up with a few candid um, chat about the day as well. So that's still online as well on our website, which is uh, thebarbersarms.co.uk. And you can still register for the 20th. Still excited about that one, Gaz. Oh, I can't wait, mate. Uh, what are you going to do? Are you, are you doing another haircut? Um, well, I think it's going to be... Um, we've got so many messages to get across about that that we're going to talk about um, different products at war. We're going to talk about different haircuts that we're going to do. So um, I think we've got models lined up, but we've got, we've got 10 to get through. And uh, so then we'll, we'll, we'll see how it comes out live as well, what's going to happen. So, yeah. Um, do you want to talk a bit about the digest as well, Gary? What's happening in the digest? Yeah, of course. But the Digest this week, if anybody wants to access the Digest, uh, there you see the British Barbers Association, that's the Digest. We've got Miss, Mrs. Jackie Hoolian, who, will, who was actually our editor-in-chief. She actually looks after this and she does a fantastic job. So anybody that needs to know anything about even in the devolved nation, so England, Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, we show you everything that's going on within the industry. We have interviews with all the top people, everybody who, who is anybody in the industry. Um, and what, what I just need to get across to you as well, it's, as, as Simon said, it's free to join. So you can access this at any time, free of charge. Also, there is added bonuses as well. So you can be a, a, an accredited salon, you can become and have an accredited uh, certificate as well in the salon as well. All I can say is it's a great, great tool for the industry. Uh, it's a non-profit organization, the BBA is, so everything that we do is tries to go back into the industry. I think we've got up to about, and we'll be, I know she's going to go mad with me now, and I'm going to say 30,000 plus members at the moment. I'm not quite sure exactly what, because it's growing all the time. We're, we're a, um, you know, an association that works for the barber, by the barber as well. Everybody who gives the time and who's involved with it 
is purely and simply for the industry as well. We're bringing you all these great events involving great people like Mr. Simon Shaw, Mr. Wall himself, uh, bringing you all in as well from the Barber's Arms uh, website as well. So it's something that we can all add to. If you want to get involved, you can do. Please, please give us your views and tips if you want to get in touch with us at any time at all. Um, another thing that we really, really important as well is anything you want to cover on the Barber's Arms or the BBA, you want something to cover, just give us a bell on the BritishBarbers.com. You can give us anything you need to do. Um, Simon, just quickly while you're on, and then we've got a little bit of time now so we can we can relax. Uh, we've got anything that you want to cover, but uh, from a local hero's point of view, I mean, Jim is the epitome, really. He's a community barber. He's, I, I think he's actually worked with Wall a little bit as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he did. Um, well, I think he's been, we've invited him a few times onto like um, Barber Connected, he did a little slot. Uh, not be fucking working anymore for us now as we're gamma, but um, <laughs> I say it as it is, you know that. But look, everybody's gonna, <laughs> there's only so many opportunities we can get. We have to manage people's expectations. So, uh, you know, I, I'm quite happy if, if if they're not to where we need them to be at and we've got our team in there and we, we keep looking at people coming in and out, um, mainly in. But, um, you know, a fair play to everybody who, who, who goes on. I know Sam Wall run a few weeks ago with a different brand. Good luck to these guys. You know, I wish them all the best uh, when they go out to uh, do whatever they do education-wise or any exhibitions. Um, you know, good luck to them all. They fucking need it. No, but the, the, the thing is as well, I mean, from a barber's arms point of view, I know uh, our main sponsor is, is Wall and, you know, we, we're thankful for that. And your association is absolutely fantastic but there is other people out there we, we we do have to cover everything else as well but from a from a point of view of you and recognizing new talent and from you know people who want to get on to for instance you know the wall stage or to catch your eye what from from a, a company point of view what what qualities do you look for for uh, you know if you if you're planning to work with somebody what what would you look for um, I kind of look for people who have not been, um, you know, I say, I've said it all through lockdown when I've done lots of interviews about people. Don't rush in at an early age and sign up with people because that can be detrimental to you later on when a big company comes in and has a look and there's old videos of you promoting a brand that we want to be associated with. So if you feel that you're going to be patient and, and wait your time, then, then you have to do that. The Gary, the, my criteria is too long to talk about because it's a, it's a tough one to get in. But little things like, you know, I, I, like last week, that I just made it that I got young Jake with me, Jake Lansley and Ben Morrison and Sam Campagna, went out for a beer after we'd had something to eat. But that's a big test for me when we go out for a beer. You know, I think I had two beers all back in my hotel for nine. And it's like, I look at people, not only how they act on stage, but it's how they act off stage as well. It's massive for me. The social media stuff, they've not been seen everywhere, but they're fantastic at what they do. I think Adam said it today, one of the biggest criteria that people have to have when they're joining the barber company in New Zealand, you've got to cut air well. Mm. So one of our things is you've got to cut air well. You've got to cut air well at all levels as well. So we kind of met people that the new breed of team that come on, there's nobody specialising in fading or pattern and design or there's nobody you know specializing in shaving they've all got to do it you've got to be multi-talented multitask and you've got to present well and so you know the new breed of people that are coming in uh, i look at the new ones that carl taylor who won the barber of the year last year you know we took him up to manchester in february and i, I think he outshone everybody on stage you know, I think, you know, in it, as I always look at myself, I manage my team like a football manager would manage his team. Got to keep motivational, got to keep, manage people's expectations. I never bollock anybody in front of anybody else. I'll always have a word with them on their own. I'll go visit them in the premises sometimes. When they need a bit of help, I'll give them the tools to give them help. So if I feel they're struggling with something and I feel their attitude's good, I will go and help them to, to get that next level. Um... But it is, you know, look, I'm a Man United fan. I always think to, to play for Wall, it's the top, top level. 
So it's going well, to be the top of your game. Well, not in the moment, though, with Man United, is it? Really? No, no. But you know what? Let, it's, let, it's, you, it's, it's a bit like Jerry Cinnamon going out in um, the SEC um, up in Scotland. It, it's like, you know, you've got to be at top of your game. And, and I look at people, not only what they do on stage, but how they handle themselves off stage as well. Just to clear up on a few things there, it's Jackie Holian, uh, correct pronunciation of Jackie's name. And you have 27,000 members at the BBA at the minute. So these are all coming in from people that is registering. Um, uh, Jackie can, says can, he's going to change the name by default to Julian. Julian. Can, can, I, can I just say I've known her 20 plus years and I'll call her wherever I want. Thank well, you. She's calling you a few things right now, actually, hey. it's up on my feed. And, um, yeah, shall we have a little hey. shot? Can we have a little hey. shot, please? I'm getting a bit of withdrawal symptoms from my uh, tough nut. So I'm, I've got to, my roasted apple now, I'm afraid. Mate, listen, have you ever been to, like, an exhibition where you've been with a big group and then, like, when you get back, you get withdrawal symptoms? You've been on stage... You've had thousands of people watching you. Like you get that bit of rush, and then it's not that. But it's like the camaraderie that you have with everybody for like the Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. When you get back Tuesday, you're like you're missing everybody. I don't know what I'm going to do next Friday because we've not got no barber's arms the day before our twenty-four hour live thing. So I think I'm going to have to come to you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Anyway, cheers. Mm. In your local gas, fuck. And just tell everybody who's watching. Over the next uh, course of the next between now and Christmas, what I want you all to try is I want you to have three or four bottles of Desperado. Yeah. Have a bottle of red wine, and in between that, we need to have some shots of um, moonshine. And then I want you to try to talk into a camera and watch it back and see if it's okay. So I'm having to do this live. <laughs> it's really tough. Hey. I'm struggling tonight. It's kicked uh, in. Honestly, it's kicked in. Well, I keep... I, I Can't keep, stop giggling. I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to watch you on... Because I'm looking at you over there, but my camera's here. Same here. Keep, my camera's over I, here and I keep watching I, you there. So, so I have to. What, I, what I'm having to do is talk to a little blank space just the other side of me, me camera there, and I'm just like, oh, I, I'm, just I'm, what, I'm watching over here, guys, but you're over here, but it's still keep going like that. Well, I'm like, <laughs> saying to me, look into your, to, into your camera, I'm like, yeah, but he's over there. And it's like it's really weird tonight for some reason. Look, look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. Oh, Rachel, honestly, Rachel's such a lucky, lucky lady. Do you tell her regular that she's lucky? Oh, yeah. Every time. Every day. <laughs> Every day I tell her how lucky she is. Oh, anyway. my gosh. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Um, the reason I've got a pen in the hand, by the way, is because I'm making out notes of this all the way through so I've got evidence of what's said tomorrow when I can't remember what's happened. Why? What's been happening? Have you been drilled the day after? Yeah, oh yeah, I get I get drilled the day after Rachel says, What did you say at quarter past ten or whatever it is? And I, just, I just have to make sure I have to make notes all the way through for next week just in case I miss something. So I have next I have this week's notes for next week, so I can refer to the last week's every time, you see. Well, I'm working tomorrow. I'm traveling off to, I'm, I'm Sunday, I'm doing some filming. Um so I feel again. Do you know what? Last last Sunday we did a live event. And I'd, I'd gone down Saturday night, we'd had a, a meal and we'd got up early Sunday morning, me and Sam went in, did the filming. And it's the first time I felt normal for like five months. <laughs> Why? <laughs> did, did you have too much last week? No, 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 no. It was just like driving to work, getting into an hotel. Next morning, getting up early, going, going into to the workplace, making sure everything were immaculate. I've got OCD, so making sure that everything were good, the camera guys were good. And then doing your stuff and then working all day and then getting back in, loading your car back up, getting in car and aching, getting out to a petrol station and filling up, you know, and then driving back and getting in at eight o'clock at night. That feeling when I got back at eight, eight o'clock last Sunday night was like magic. And normally I'd be like, oh, it's worst part of my job is travelling. And yeah. I'm like, gosh, I've so missed this. 
So I can't wait tomorrow to uh, pack my bag again and uh, be off again tomorrow for some filming on Sunday. So yeah, you know, let's keep it nice and safe out there. Let's let's make sure that we're not going to cut his noses off to spite his faces. Let's just uh, keep doing it right so we can all enjoy what we're going to do. Do you know what? Do you know what though? Don't you think? Um... You know when you come off stage or whatever, and you or you come off a uh, platform, or even if it might be, um, you know, Aston and Fincher or something, where, wherever it is, wherever you've taught that particular day or wherever you perform, you come off on a high anyway, don't you? I mean, I'm, I'm sure everybody knows the, the science behind it, the endorphins and everything else, but you miss that as well. It must be like sportsman or whatever else it is. But and I know we're not, you know, to the point where he, he, we. Um, we get to the point where we, we're going to miss it to the point where it, it'll be never happen again. But he, I think even if even when you've taught somebody on a one-to-one or a, a classic college or whatever it is, you love it, don't you? That's what you're there for. That's what you, you perform. You, you are the ultimate performer. I think you actually physically miss that as well, though, don't you? Well, do you know what? I think if you'd have looked at Simon Shaw in his early 40s, when this all started happening for me, when I would travel, started to travel the world and get big audiences and really fed off a massive audience, that Simon wouldn't have dealt with this at all well. As I've got into me late 40s now, um, that I've <laughs> dealt with it really well. But there's some days where I do think, you know, I drive along in my car and I'm feeling it and I put some music on to fetch myself around thinking, listen, there's worse things happening in life. I work for a fantastic company. I've still got massive opportunities in front of me and it will come back, uh, the, the working in front of the audience's life. But yeah, I do miss it. And uh, the newest thing I got to it last week was look, looking at the little eye camera that's saying there's 283 people watching you live, try and perform in front of that. When I do the Boots conference, you know, there's going to be 700 people each day watching me live. There's only a cameraman and, and sound people around me. Um, but that's, at the minute, I've got to take that. And, you know, if it protects people and saves lives, then then so what? My ego, my thirst for working in front of an audience can wait till 2021. But let me promise you, we will work as hard as possible to come back with fresher ideas, brand new stage shows, Amazing acts on stage, the best barbers, the best products. I can't wait for it. So, you know, um, hang on, and that'll only be on the barbers' arms. The barbers' arms. You know, do you know what I want to say to everybody tonight as well? Is you'll all probably feel this as well, but we we know this at Wall as well. Is um, most of your Christmas parties and stuff. Looking at the the restrictions, a minute, going to be cancelled. They're not. They're not going to happen. Now we're not going to finish on a lower yet. But what I want to. Uh, put on you all is that the Friday before Christmas we're going to have a massive party on Barbara's Arms and we've got lots of stuff coming up we've talked to you about the education on the 20th and 21st uh, don't forget to share this tonight as well share it with everybody everybody who's watching please give us a share and a tap to make sure everybody's seeing what me and Gaz and the great guests we've had on tonight but the Friday before Christmas let's have a massive drink where we, Trev's going to kill me for saying this but we want to get everybody on screen we, we don't want no guests that night we just want to get people in from everywhere to say cheers to us. So um, if you've not got a Christmas uh, party, we might do a Barber's Arms Awards for the top fan and the top guest. And, the, the, we, you know, it could be things that you can all vote for at home as well. So with the producers, we'll speak about that. But that's something that I really want to work work on before Christmas as well. Uh, fuck Boris. I'm going to fetch Christmas back. If he's going to stick you down a six, we're going to do it virtually where there could be 66 of you on screen that night, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> have you just have... seen that? Have you just seen that on your screen? <laughs> the Tash Man. <laughs> can we, uh, can we yeah, do the last, why not? last moonshine then? Um, I've, 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 got, these uh, tonight. I've got the Wild Berry uh, to finish with, so good oh, answer. Tough Nuts gone, and the Roasted Apple's gone. Uh, Jackie, if you're listening, just send me them in future. Full bottles, no of uh, the uh, bitter rose or the uh, wild berries. All right, actually, to be fair. Um, uh, can I can I just say one thing? Thank you to Mr. Frank Gambuza uh, to introducing me to Moonshine. I don't know if the production team will actually thank him as well, but 
We're going to send him this episode as well. Frank, we need you on this show. We need Tennessee on the map on this show. Come on. We need you on the show, man. So I'm just, just, just shaming him into coming on because he's not taking me call at the moment. So Definitely. Frank, get get on, you. Frank. So don't forget to share, guys, tonight, episode 23. Thanks to all the uh, 94,000 that watched us last week. We hope you've enjoyed tonight, the amazing guest, Adam Johansson from New Zealand, from the Barbershop Company. We've had Jim the Trim on from Wales. Great guy, Jim, doing great work with autism. Uh, and he's absolutely average clipper company that he's working for at the minute. So well done, Jim. Um, Gaz has been fantastic again tonight. We've done the moonshine. We've done some red wine. We've done a fig and honey cocktail episode 23 doesn't uh, shy away from what are you drinking now this one is a uh, um, bitter and twisted gold nail but you know this what this just if you said one word there that keys it off and i know i'm saying change subject can anybody remember twisted levi's oh how now, long currently you, now, now, now you've shown your age now I don't look it, but I'm, I might be talking it. I don't fucking look my age. What I'm saying is, Twisted Levi's, apparently, if you've got some, they are fetching loads of money if you can sell them, if you want to sell them. I mean, mine are a waist 32, so I used to wear them when I was nine. But yeah, um, I, I, I've still got a pair somewhere, but I've heard today that Twisted Levi jeans are making a massive comeback. So barbers, if you're out there, You've got some twisted Levi's, get them on and uh, get them on your eBay account. Get them sold in there, cash in there, guys. Hey, Manchester, the, there's a shop in Manchester deals in all retro stuff. Honestly, you can get anything there. It's fantastic. I won't name the name because we're not giving any free out there, but it's uh, fantastic. As you can see, Gaz is wearing some of the retro gear tonight, so it all looks good. And... Uh, yeah, it might, it might, it's he's just checking. Do you know what, though, Gary? That just shows that Rachel's got your clothes ready tonight. She's got your cocktails ready tonight. You don't even know what you're wearing. Is it Hugo Boss? Is it Versace? You know, you don't know because she gets <laughs> ready. You're smelling. I can. It's like smell a vision. I can smell the Tom Ford. Oh my God! You're living the dream there in Stoke on Trent. Ow. Hey, hey, listen. Behind every great man is a fantastic woman. And that's well, all I can say. I love it. Do you know what? Ken Lee has really started to say to me, you know, every time I listen to you and Gaz talk, I really need to step it up. She's got a really busy salon. When she comes off from the salon, she's really, really busy with all the social media and everything as well, which says I really need to step it up um, uh, looking after you. And so I don't know where the fuck she is, but um, I've had no cocktails tonight. I've had nothing ready for me. Uh, I cooked a tea for her before I came on live, so uh, it's not sunk in yet. But we're still working on her. She's she's uh, she's 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 at it. Yeah, but all the because thing, of Rachel. The, the thing is, though, you're only as young as the woman you feel. Oh my days! I'm 36. Then get in. I mean, I mean, Rachel's 36 ish. But she's still fantastic. How old is Errol, Rachel says? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Errol, if you're watching tonight, Errol Douglas, one of our big fans on Barbara's Arms, great host as well. You know, Rich, you know, uh, Errol, you've got one big, big fan, and that's uh, Rachel Bishop, Gaza's partner. She thinks you're absolutely amazing. And uh, when we go to a dinner, and I'm sure me and Gaz are going to go to some hairdressing awards and Oscars to pick up the uh, chat show of the year. Um, Rachel would love to uh, sit with you all and uh, to, to, to do that. In fact, I spoke to Joe at Shabba Awards and she said, uh, she'd been watching the Barber's Arms and she said, you, you host the Barb, I, I host the Shabba Awards, sweet Caroline. Um, and um, I said, you should fetch in a little category there for the, the virtual chat show of a lockdown. She says, I can't do that because you'd win it easy. You can't be on stage uh, doing the conference. It's only one. I says, Gaz would love that. He'd love to be in the audience and just going up on stage and we presenting it to him. It'd be absolutely amazing. Gaz, it's been a pleasure again. Episode 23. Um, I don't know where the weeks go. 
um, amazing. Guys, stay safe out there. Do the right thing. We've got to make sure that we don't get a second lockdown. You've heard it from tonight's guest uh, in Australia. They didn't mess about. They did a second lockdown. So do the right thing. Um, get get it done. Good luck to Alex tomorrow. My son is playing for York City against Whitby. I'm not allowed to go because it's behind closed doors, but good luck, son. Hope you do a good job. Tonight's show for me, dedicated to... what I think he listens to this on uh, Sunday night. One of your big pals as well, but Bill, Bill Shaw... Uh, you know, for me, growing up in the industry, um, I learned so, so much. A lot of things I do today is what I learned at Dimensions off Bill. And um, I'll never forget the t t tutorial that he gave me. And it wasn't about hairdressing or about Bill never showed me one technique in terms of cutting, colouring uh, or hairdressing. But he taught me how to act in meetings, but at the top level at the top level for corporate meetings, how to put presentations together. And a lot of that training that I had off these guys in my early days of, uh, asked, is still stuff that I use today. So uh, tonight, Bill, if you're listening on, I think he listens to this on a Sunday night. Bill, this is to you tonight. Gaz, over to you, pal. Thank you very much. Uh, my partner in crime, Simon, I'd thank everybody who's watched tonight, but most of all, Simon, for being my co-host. He's absolutely fantastic. Credit to the industry. Love you to death, mate. A um, couple of people, John McNally, who's, who's joined us tonight, he's instrumental in trying to get us um, a professional industry recognised within uh, Parliament. He's an SMP. Um, he runs our parliamentary group as well. Fantastic fella. Barber as well. You know, one and only. Um, Got locked down with him when we had the a little bit of miser in Parliament years ago, and he, he he was an absolute gent. Keith Coniford, as usual, thank you very much, Keith. I've been in touch with Keith this week, and I'm going to be uh, following as well. We're still lobbying for our profession to be recognised. Everybody, anybody who can, please get on board and join the Hair and Barber Council. Um, final word is. Everybody do the right thing. Um, next week, we haven't got a Barber's Arms, have we, next Friday? So we are live 24 hours. So please join us on the 24-hour um, education platform at thebarbersarm.com. Thank you very much, Simon. It's always been a pleasure, mate. Love you all. Good night, guys. See you all next, um, week. No, next week on the uh, 20th on our live education day. Have a great weekend, stay safe, and we'll see you all soon. Adios, amigos. Yeehaw! Yeah!